Hello, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Talking Cafe Live on this Monday, the 15th of March. Um, I'm Jane Lillis, village agent with the West Somerset team with the Community Council for Somerset. Uh, we hope you're going to um, find today's session interesting. We are going to be talking about the eight parishes affordable housing uh, working group um, site consultation for affordable housing across Exmoor today. Uh, I have two guests in the studio with me. I have Jane Birch from the Smart Communities team with the Community Council for Somerset and Nicola Kemp, uh, the Rural Housing Lady from Somerset West and Taunton Council. Uh, if you have any comments, uh, we are recording this session. It is not going out live, unfortunately, but please do put your comments into uh, the comments box uh, and someone from uh, either Somerset Western Taunton or CCS will be back in touch with you um, to help respond to your questions. So to get us started, I'm going to hand over to Jane Birch, who's going to tell us a little bit of the background about the Rural Housing Survey on Exmoor. Good morning. Hi, Jane. Hi, nice to see you. Um, yeah, I just want to just give a little bit of background to, to what Nicola's doing at the moment um, that we were involved in a couple of years ago now. Things have um, moved a little, you know, um, moved on from where, where we were back then. Back in uh, 2017, it's, we started this project, um, working with um, the eight parishes that Nicola's going to be talking more about um, what's been happening with them more recently, which are, I've got it written down here, so don't forget anybody, uh, Timberscombe, Exford, Winsford, Cutcombe, Whitney Courtney, Exton, Luckham and Luxborough. So all in the central part of Exmoor, working with those parishes alongside the National Park Authority and what was then West Somerset Council. And the idea was that to carry out a housing needs survey around looking at affordable housing needs for the people that live or are connected to those parishes, people who are living there, working there, or have got a family connection. It was decided to do them as a group of parishes, partly because the population is quite low in that area, so it made sense to do them collectively, and they've also got common links around schools and, and buses and, and employment as well. So we kind of, um, they, form, they formed a group um, to do this piece of work. And um, we worked with them to develop a, a survey that would, be appropriate for those those parishes around what, what affordable housing need there was and also to fit in with the planning constraints of the national park and um, because it's particular because being a national park things are slightly um, different from in other district areas. So we put together a survey which then went out to um, every household within the within that area um, and it was available as a paper survey that went to everybody's through everybody's door but also it's an online survey so enable people to fill it in whichever way was good for them um, and we also encourage people who were employers in the area to share it with their employees who perhaps need to live in the area but couldn't at the moment um, or with people who that's children who grow, grown up and left and had to move elsewhere but really needed to be living in that area so we tried to make it as uh, as inclusive as possible so that went out to all the households in that um, in that area and that although that information came back in and we from that um process which was obviously we handled in a very confidential manner because you're dealing with lots of personal data with very kind of clear data management policies about what we do with people's data a report was produced which was then the housing need that came from then has informed the next stage of the project and that's where um nicola's work has come in to kind of implement that the, the needs that were apparent in that survey um, or what, what's kind of the basis really of what, what, she, what she's able to do now. Um, obviously that was a snapshot in time and things people's needs change. Um, you know, people move, marry, split up, all kinds of different, you know, grow up, the things happen. Um, but generally we find that there'll be a, there'll be a shift, but generally within a, a survey, you'll, you'll get a good idea of what that need is. Even a couple of years on, it will still be um, mm. relevant and useful thing. For that, sure. um, um, we get involved in a lot of parishes across Somerset doing this and normally sometimes it's like this once you're around affordable housing and they want to do something for their parish uh, but sometimes it's sort of, you know there's a planning application coming in and they want to um, 
uh, kind of have been formed as a parish council to be able to say, actually, that's not what our parish needs, or we need more of this kind of housing and less of that, or whatever. So it helps them, helps those parishes to be have that information, that that um, robust data that they can then use to help them to move forward. And I really hope that um, it's been useful for for, for Nicola's work. Um, she she works with the group across those parishes. So that's. That's what our role is, um, and that's what we that's what we did. And it's it's just really good to see that um, the parish is working together to make this this happen. That it wasn't just a piece of research that happened; it's actually being used practically, and they're clearly moving forward really well. Move, moving forward yeah. with the consultation, um, so I, I can introduce Nick now. Um, Nick is rural housing enabler. Is that the right? Job title for you, Nick. Um, yes, it's, yeah, rural housing Taunton, <laughs> um, and uh, she's the lady who is uh, administering the uh, consultation. So I think I'm going to hand over to Nick now to tell us all about it. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Jane, and uh, well, thank you both, Jane. So Jane uh, Birchall, obviously, for the background into what's behind the consultation, and, and Jane as the village agent. Um, yeah, as, as Jane said, the, 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 eight, the eight parishes in the centre of Exmoor um, came, to, came together to do the housing needs survey. Once the results of that housing needs survey were known, um, the eight parish councils within the, the parish councils within those eight parishes um, put, pulled together to form a, a working group, um, which is known as the with the with the very short title of the eight parishes affordable housing working group. <laughs> um, so each each council had the opportunity to put a, a member on that working group, and I think there are five there are five members to that working group. It is supported by Somerset Western Taunton, um, through myself and also Sue Sue uh, Southwell, who's another of the housing enablers, and by um, Exmoor National Parks Planning Team, so that they've they've got um, very good communications with with what what might be possible after after the survey and going forwards in terms of identifying um, sites. Uh, and what the working group actually did was put out a call for sites to all landowners within the area, having I, having using the data from the housing needs survey. I think the, the idea was that it, it proved a need for about 12 um, households, so or 12 properties within those eight parishes. So the, the working group put out a call for sites and they asked local landowners to come forward with any land that they might consider for the development of local affordable housing. Um, several or many landowners replied and several sites were identified. And then this is where the National Park came into their own because they sifted through the sites and identified the ones that were most likely to be considered suitable for development. Uh, I mean, not, as an example, if somebody put put forward a piece of land in the middle of the moor that's not near any of the properties, it's it's unlikely that that would be a suitable site. So this is why the National Parks involvement was absolutely key. Um, so pulling together all the information that was available, um, finally, seven sites within the those eight parishes have been identified and that is now the focus of this consultation. In actual fact, the sites were identified about a year ago. So it took a year to get to that stage. So the, the housing needs survey was carried out in 2018. In 2019, the Affordable Housing Working Group came together, carried out this call for sites. And in early 2020, the, the sites were more or less finalised. And then, as you can imagine, um, as has happened for so many things, COVID, put the put the brakes onto everything because the next stage at that point was to carry out a consultation and you it was expected to be um in each of the village halls within those parishes to enable people to the, the villagers and the residents to come into the village hall see the see the plans of the sites uh and give their comments there and then and have a, a real nice community face-to-face -face involvement so mm -hmm. it was delayed uh, for initially a month, two months, and then as we all know that COVID has just continued and continued. So um, the the Eight Parishes Affordable Housing Group has has put their heads back together and, and said, well, how, how really can we do this? So again, with the support of the National Park uh, and, and Somerset Western Taunton's involvement, we've actually set up an online survey. 
Um, so that each each question has a copy of the map for that relevant question, and it's a very very basic survey. It is here is here's the here's the the site. This is the parish it's in. Here's the site. Um, do you think this is a suitable site for development, and and why why do you think that? And and that's essentially what we're asking in on each of the seven sites. <coughs> um, and, and clearly, somebody who lives in in Exford might think, well, why would I want to comment on a site in Exton or or in in Luckham? And and the answer is they don't have to, but they're they're fully entitled to. So they they can comment just on the sites within their own parish. They can comment on all the sites. It's it's entirely open for them to put what whatever they want. Everybody's entitled to their opinions. Um, because the consultation again couldn't be face to face it's going to be online so that's going to reduce the number of of people probably that will access it it's been decided to promote it more widely than just the eight parishes so in actual fact first of all we've we've come to the talking cafe to to encourage as many people as we can to to participate in this survey um hey, the expert panel if i can just it, just interrupt one second to say that the link for the survey has been put up there online for anybody who wants it. Sorry to interrupt you there, Nick, but I just thought I'd point that out, that that is the link to the consultation survey up there online. Carry on. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you very much. Jay. Yeah, that's that's absolutely great. Obviously, I can keep talking and talking as much as I like, but if there isn't, if nobody knows where to go, they can't comment. <laughs> Um, so first of all, yes, please, please use the link that's there. That takes you to the page on the, it's actually the, the survey is hosted on the National Parks um, website. But as I, as I stress, it is not a National Park survey and it's not a Somerset Western Taunton survey. It is a survey for the affordable housing group. Um, but yes, please use that link uh, and go to it and, and have a look. And if you only want to comment on one site, just comment on one site. If you want to comment on all the sites, please do so. We just need as many people as possible to engage with this uh, and involve the community. Um, so yes, the, the I think the Exmoor panel um, will have talked about this last week and the Exmoor Consultative Forum will be will be um, discussing this next week. Um, Talking Cafe have, have been very supportive and given us a whole slot today to talk about this. Um, each of the eight parishes named there um, have got um, have got, been given posters to promote the survey and, and encourage everybody to take part in it. Um, and it's really just about spreading the word. Obviously, not just people within those parishes are, are, are eligible to potentially take one of these sites forward. Should they be? Should they wish to? The 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 local connection is required for each of these sites for for affordable housing. And without going into the, the it's 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 very simple in one way, but it's very difficult to explain it. Um, but essentially, anybody with a local connection to the parish or adjoining parishes, as I understand it. So, so anybody in Cutcombe, those eight parishes are the adjoining parishes. But in fact, anybody in, uh, let's say, Exton, for example, well, Dulverton is an adjoining parish to Exton, I believe. So, uh, and and I'm not too sure what the next one is. Perhaps Brompton Regis. So, those eight parishes are not the be all and end all anybody that neighbors any of these parishes is also entitled to fully entitled to and in fact anybody within the national park really is entitled to an opinion but it's very relevant to anybody within those eight parishes and their neighbors um and i'm just trying to think. so it, just to move forward the the survey is actually open for the whole of this month um so until the 31st of march and um essentially the next step after that will be we will collate everybody's responses and please as i say go use the link go online submit your responses um and then those results will be presented back to the eight parishes affordable housing working group uh, and and will be available uh, however they determine they wish them to be um with whatever comments people have made it, it's a it's a an anonymous survey but the comment the valid comments i'm sure will be made available on each of the uh, sites as appropriate okay brilliant so that, that's great nick um just as the village agent that covers exmoor and dulverton i'm aware that there are a number of 
households within those parishes that are perhaps not IT users, um, being a, an older profile um, and maybe not even smartphone users. Uh, is there some way that the, the consultation and survey can be completed without going online? Yes, excellent question, as we say, yes. So we we have tried to keep this consultation as COVID secure as possible, hence the whole focus on the online survey. Um, Recognising, as you said, that not everybody is, is um, completely happy with online options. There are a limited number of paper copies available in the village shops in Timberscombe, Wooden Courtney, Wedden Cross, which is obviously Cutcombe Parish, um, Exford and Winsford. And I do stress a limited number. The, the idea is not for, for people to wander and pick one up and, and walk off with it and, and not use it. They're, they are there really for the people that cannot do online access or really don't want to do online access. Um, each of those paper copies of the survey have um, all the maps attached to them as well so that people can literally pick that, pick that copy up complete it using the maps as reference and they also have a, a prepaid return envelope to send them back to Somerset Western Taunton so they don't have to take them back to the shop or worry about them being stored anywhere they just pop them in the envelope and they're sent back to Somerset Western Taunton and then they will then be added into the online survey details so we've that, we, we we contemplated back the possibility of holding um sort of socially distanced face-to-face -face appointmented con um, contact but it, it really with the lockdown as it as it was increased again mm. after Christmas it just was not, not appropriate to do so so yeah. it was um, online as far as possible uh, some limited paper copies um, for those that really don't want to do the online version don't ha don't don't have that facility but really want to to, to, oh, to comment don't have the access sorry yeah don't, that's I'm, fine. I'm not comfortable um, don't have and and as you say, that there, there, there's a map of each of the potential sites or identified sites. Um, and we've got a little screenshot there of what one of those maps looks like. Um, Nick, can you just sort of talk us through the information on, on there generally? We've got the... Yeah, so this is um, the, the Exton, yeah, the Exton site. So as you can see, um, the 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 site that is being looked at is the, is outlined in black in the centre, and the map itself says Exton. It says Exton at the top, and then down just below the map itself, uh, at the bottom of the screen, there is there is a detail um, that says this is a. I can't quite see it on that one. I think it's a small site. Bear with me. I've got. I have actually got one of the paper copies here. Hang on. I should have been a bit more prepared for that, sorry. So, just below the map, it says small scale site considered, and this is where the National Park again have been very helpful, small scale site considered likely to accommodate fewer than five units. So the National Park assessed each of the sites uh, and put them into small, medium and large. Um, small is less than five units, medium is five to nine units, and large is ten or above units. Um, so that was that's the uh, that's the other work that the National Park have done. They've been saying it'd be very very helpful. But yes, each site also tells you. So, so you wouldn't look at a site and think, "Blimey, is that how many? Is that going to have one house or ten houses?" It does actually give you some indication. Mm -hmm. Not indication of what is possible not what is um intended to happen and the the yeah. other thing to stress at this point is um with the exception of these sites they are only their sites up for consultation they've not been granted planning permission uh, they've not even had planning permission submitted they are they are purely sites that the national park have assessed as being um, as having potential, so nobody's taken any steps on that. The the exception to that is the Cutcombe uh, Two site, which is at the end of Market Close, which I believe it's Cutcombe Two, which does already, yeah, the Cutcombe Two site, which does actually already have 
planning permission for two properties, two self-builds as part of the development of the former market site at Kirkcombe. But it's included in for, for um, completeness within this consultation. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, and and we are talking here, we're talking affordable housing. Do you want to uh, just give a definition of that for people? Yeah, so the, the National Parks has a uh, the local plan in place to ensure that um, new development is essentially for um, locals and is retained at an affordable cost uh, based on the fact that wages within the area are, are considerably lower and house prices tend to be considerably higher than the national average. So um, the, the local plan stipulates, we've, we've already touched very briefly on how the local connection works. Um, essentially, you, you have to have a, a local connection to the parish or, or adjoining parishes. So you have to be, you have to have, have lived there for 10 years within the last 30 years um, and be looking to uh, set up a new household. So, for example, you, you could have grown up there with your parents um, and when you've, you've reached an age you're, you're looking to move out and get set up your own property that that's one example where you 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 would meet the local criteria to move out and, and develop a new property um you could um be carry out work which requires you to live close to work within those parishes um so that, that you know a, a, this sort of clusters a, a key worker um it's essential that you live there to reduce the travel and uh, meet the working criteria. Um, it might be that you need to live in that uh, close to a relative to provide so that to provide care for either the relative or for the relative to provide care. There's so there's there's certain requirements on. Essentially, the idea is not that somebody can buy somebody from outside the area can come and say I'd like to live there and I'd like to build a property. Thank you very much. It's it's to keep um, the, the, all the property development purely for those that actually need to live on Exmoor and, and have a local connection to the area. Um, yeah. As we say, affordable is about keeping the, the price of the property, <laughs> as, as it states, at an affordable level. Um, it, it's it's yeah. about not... The open market values just seem to, to spiral out of control. And if I, I couldn't comment on what, I can't remember what the actual prices quoted are, but essentially it's in recognition of the, the lower average wages within the area. Uh, and it's what we call a, a for a private self-build, a discount open market. So the value of the property is 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 a, an amount less than the than what it would be on the open market. On the open market. Uh, it would be tied only to be available to local people. Yeah. 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 Excellent. That's great, Nick. Thank you. So to, to just just recap uh, really anybody who is resident within those eight parishes or neighboring parishes are probably those that should be looking at this consultation and completing it yes or perhaps those with a local connection uh, who are considering moving back to the area is that right yes, definitely that's the other option is yes yeah, somebody that's left Yes, somebody that's that's left for whatever reason, but wants to come back and, and has the local connection. Brilliant. Um, very good yeah. point. And I miss them. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and to confirm the closing date for responses to the survey is the 31st of March. It's is, is that right? yes. So all, all online surveys. Yes, please. Yeah, all online surveys to be submitted by the 31st of March and paper surveys to be posted back again. If, if paper surveys don't arrive back till the 2nd or 3rd of April, we're, that's not too much of a problem. But um, yeah, the, the online survey will, will end on the 31st of March and then the paper, the few paper copies will be added to that as well. OK, and what will be the next steps after the consultations closed? What are you going to be moving on to do with the data you get? Brilliant. Yeah, a good question. The, so the, the consultation is closed. Um, I will then um, analyse the results uh, and, and put those in a, a format to present to the affordable housing working group um, and and hopefully they will they will then agree how they can be presented to the wider community i think it's important to keep wider community involvement at this stage 
Um, the, obviously, what we're also hoping the profile of these sites raises awareness of them and potentially brings people forward that may want to, to talk about the option of, of developing one of them. Um, it might also bring forward other landowners that think, oh, I, I also have a site that might be available. But so there's 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 numerous little outlets that are potentially available, but it, it, it sticking closely to the survey um, towards the end of March, we're presenting the results to the affordable housing group and they will then make them available to the wider community. And um, the, the actual affordable housing group will decide the next steps at that point, whether it's to consider looking for a developer for one of the perhaps larger sites to for some social housing, whether it's worth promoting sites to um, self-builders. There is a self-build register with Exmoor National Park. Um, the, 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 there's no defined um, process at this point. The, the, the affordable housing working group is simply to facilitate and encourage the affordable houses they're not looking to actually build and develop them themselves but they're looking to to promote and make 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 um make the journey right. a lot easier so the, the, so the two next, options there are self-build um or social housing through a developer yeah so the, basically the next steps go back to the working group from the parishes um, to, to move on from there, dependent on the results of the survey. Really excellent. Yes, yeah. That's fantastic. Okay. Um, Jane, did you want to, to add anything or have any specific questions for Nick? Um, I don't think, I, I just wanted to, I'm just really pleased that it's moving forward and um, the group have got your support, Nick, to, to take this, this forward. Um, and just and just really to, to reiterate that if other parishes want to do a similar thing, it's this is something. Um, obviously, the last year has been exceedingly odd um, and hard to do any as, Jane, as uh, Nick said any kind of consultation. But um, we have got parishes that are looking to do this in the next few months. And so, if there are other people that would want to look at this, because um, it's it's I think the, the reason that the National Park and West Somerset Council are keen to do this is because it helps our communities stay alive that we're not you know they don't just become places um of people who you know have got very large incomes or are just use as holiday homes they're actually living places where people are living and working and have their families and their connections and that's relevant everywhere i think it's particularly extreme in a national park but it's across somerset house prices are relatively high incomes can be quite low could be for local people um so yeah, if this is something that other parishes would like to look at, um, then we'd be really happy to talk about how, how you go, go about that and the, the steps. And all the district councils are really keen to promote this kind of work and to work with parishes to, to make it make it happen. So, um, yeah, just to, to give, us, give us a ring at, at CCS and we'll um, I'll do our best to kind of guide people on what's 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 helpful and what's the best route for their their parish. So hopefully they can go down a similar route to um to the excellent parishes are doing that's fantastic jane and really good and yeah i mean the the, the point you make about um sort of a, a gap between the level of wages and the, the house prices um and i think as well the move because of covid towards purchasing in rural and coastal areas is probably having an impact in West Somerset. Um, I'm not up to date with, with this agent data, but it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest to find that we are one of the higher percentage rising areas um, based on, on what I have read in the press. Um, but of course, we have such wonderful local communities all we can do to protect those and keep those, as you say, as living and working communities uh, in this lovely area is uh, a fantastic thing. So thank you both. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Nick. Um, hopefully that's been useful for our viewers. Um, please, if you have any comments uh, or um, want to get in touch with us, you can always message us via the CCS um, uh, Facebook page. Uh, we have put up contact details for Nick and the link to the survey. Uh, we hope you will complete that survey if it is relevant to you and you are in one of those parishes uh, or are looking to live in one 
of those parishes. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing what the results of the survey are when they come through. So thank you, everyone, and goodbye for today. Thank you.